Circle, which is a relatively new Bitcoin company uh, providing Bitcoin services to people, uh, has opened its doors to the whole world. Uh, they were previously in beta, limited to a you know certain amount of people who had access, and now it's open to everyone. And basically, the main appeal of Circle, it seems like to me, that wasn't available anywhere else before, is that now it's possible to buy Bitcoin instantly using a credit or debit card and have it available right away. You can leave it in your Circle account if you want or transfer it to a separate wallet application or put it in a paper wallet or whatever you want. Bottom line is instant Bitcoin access available to anyone who has a debit or credit card, which is pretty huge. That wasn't really available anywhere else before. Previously, like one of the best options was Coinbase, which you would have to place an order and wait for like five days to get the Bitcoin in your account. Uh, or go on local Bitcoins and set up a meeting with someone at the local coffee shop or something and pay in cash, which is kind of inconvenient. Or on local Bitcoins, go on and make a purchase with PayPal, you know, hope that um, hope that the person you're transacting with is, is legitimate and, you know, reliable and stuff. Now Circle just makes all of that kind of obsolete, actually, as long as you have a debit or credit card. And you, just, you just buy it instantly. Um, there's pretty much no fees, really. Uh, there's just a fee, there's just like s s tiny banking fees that they couldn't get around. And even that goes away if you like instantly connect your bank account to it. So, uh, you know, we've, we've previewed, we've talked a little bit about Circle before and previewed their services, but now they're totally available. And um, yeah, it opens up brand new possibilities for, for buying pressure, really. Uh, for the price and also for people who just want to get Bitcoin instantly in really like any amount you want, any small amount or any large amount. Um, Evan, have you have you tried out Circle yet or gotten any experience with this? No, I haven't tried Circle yet, but I definitely need to. Um, see, I, I've i never been exposed to the inconveniences of, of buying Bitcoin because I've never actually bought any Bitcoin. Uh, you know, I've told this story before, so... Yeah, um, freelance payments and Bitcoin and stuff yeah, like that. So, but, yeah, so yeah, I should definitely probably try Circle because it seems pretty cool to just be able to type in your credit card information and, and buy it. But I have kind of an unpopular opinion about this. Okay, hit me. I don't think this is really a big deal at all. Okay. Let's, so, all right. You can buy Bitcoin instantly, no fees with your credit card. Mm -hmm. That's awesome if you're already buying Bitcoin. Uh, what does Circle bring to the table that's going to make my mom go and buy some Bitcoin? Because that's what we need right now. Uh, you know, because at the end of the day, you still have to convince people why they should buy bitcoin so they can go to a store and buy something when they could just go to the, when they could just not buy bitcoin and go to the store and buy something with cash or credit mm -hmm. um because yeah i mean circle is cool because it makes buying bitcoin a lot more efficient a lot faster all this stuff um but it's not really going to encourage adoption you like you can tell people oh well you can buy it instantly well, why am I going to buy it in the first place? You know, you have to convince people to buy it before you can show them how awesome it is to buy it instantly. And, yeah. you know, that's just what I think about it. Yeah, um, I think there's there's a pretty wide spectrum of people who would be potential buyers of Bitcoin. Of course, you know, the circle development isn't going to convince any of the people who are already really skeptical from the beginning and who are opposed to it and, and you know, don't want to get involved with it. They consider it a, a Ponzi scheme whatever their criticisms criticisms are i think this has a real potential to impact the people who were already on the fence about bitcoin who have been kind of watching it in the news lately and you know think it might be disruptive and think it might be fun to just experiment with 
who might want to get involved with like the new newest technology and finance and things like that. So the people who are already on the fence, but before they would look into ways of buying Bitcoin and they're like, oh man, I've got to meet with someone in a coffee shop who I don't know, or I've got to link my bank account to Coinbase and then wait five days for it. So I've, like, I've got to place the order, like my money is gone and then I've got to wait five days to get my Bitcoins. I'm not sure I want to do that. Like Circle allows those kind of people who are on the fence and kind of don't really like the buying options that were available to them already to have like an instant like you know impulse buying right there's a lot of people who do impulse buys they decide one day it's like okay I'm gonna get involved with this I'm gonna do this and it's like they might not feel that same way the next day because like the price drops or whatever but like they have the option now to buy it instantly when they have the impulse to buy right so that that's I think that's the main difference that circle uh, brings to the table and like I don't want to say for sure that we'll see another Bitcoin bubble because I don't think it's for sure but if another bubble happens circle is going to be a huge huge factor in that because uh, people are going to be able to just buy into the bubble instantly and you know get along for the ride right away without having to wait at all and just impulse buy boom you're in Circle holds your bitcoins or transfer them to a separate wallet. So, impulse buys. That's I think the main main thing this brings to the table. Well, that's a good point because there there were a few times before I started um, writing for Coinbrief where I was like, okay, I'm just gonna make an account with an exchange and I'm going to you know I'm gonna buy some bitcoin. Um, so. You know, the, ex the exchange I chose was Bitstamp for whatever reason because that was the first thing that popped up when I Googled Bitcoin exchange. Um, and so I made an account and I was like, okay, I'm not putting my social security, I'm not giving my social security number to this website, I'm not giving my bank account number to this website. Um, it, you know, and then it all, like, um, like a, like some kind Identification, of proof of, yes, proof of residence, like yeah, all that proof crazy of stuff. And then it was like, and then it asked for like some kind of bill. Like you, you just need a bill to prove that you like that you're an actual whatever, person who lives yeah, for whatever at a security place reason and like, in the United States. You know, well, like, well, I don't want to give them my social security number. I don't want to give them my bank account, driver's license number. I don't want to give them all that. And then on top of all that, I live at home, so I don't have any bills that I can show them. Um, so, you know, it's not really worth my time. It's a huge hassle. Yeah, so so that's actually a good point. Um, but still, those people, those potential impulse buyers, it, they are an extremely small minority compared to the skeptics out there who would be convinced if they had, um, like, a bonus option with their salary or if they could have an option to get their wages paid in Bitcoin as like an investment thing. Um, that would do way that's that's going to do way more for Bitcoin than making it easier for people to just buy it with a credit card. Um, especially especially now that the, that the price is like, you know, hit through the floor right now. It's at you know it's at three thirty. Nobody nobody's gonna buy yeah. it all. I should nobody's have mentioned that at the beginning the of the podcast down. that the price has actually dropped in the past week by like eighteen percent just in the past week, and and we've fallen from like four hundred last week to around three hundred thirty right now. And, and some people are predicting that we're gonna see a retest of two hundred sixty six dollars, which was the previous all time high of tw of early twenty thirteen. So, yeah, price price going down yeah that's you know that's definitely not very encouraging for impulse buyers even if they can buy it instantly so right you know the first the first thing that has to happen is the price has to stop falling and then if we want like you know significant growth not just you know people who are like marginal skeptics who would who only need just one little reason to buy in um, we, we, you know, we have to get people who otherwise, if, if they have to put existing wealth into it, they're not going to buy into it. They have to, you know, they have to get it through like, 
you know, some kind of, you know, bonus system with their job or something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, circle circle is really awesome. It's really cool. It's filling a demand that's been around for, you know, probably at least a year, maybe a year and a half or two years. So that's cool. But I just don't think, um, it's this huge, you know, turning point in Bitcoin's history, like some people are making it out to be. Yeah, that's that's why I kind of I I made the qualifying premise be that if there's another bubble, then that's like the only reason why there would be a lot of people putting ex their existing wealth into Bitcoin because they think it'll it'll grow their wealth. Like if the price starts rising steadily from 300 back to 400 again and then rises to 500 relatively quickly and then 600 again then like the people who have been watching this for a while they'll be like okay shit this thing is going way up again this might be another bubble i want to get rich you know the greed factor comes in and then they if they know about circle that'll probably be their best option for for buying into the to, into the next hype train but like that's assuming another bubble happens again at all which might never happen and if it does happen it might not happen until like late next year like once all this merchant adoption madness kind of settles out and like <laughs> once we figure out what's happening with mining centralization and and you know miners not being profitable anymore so there's a lot of downward pressure questions happening but if we have another bubble circle will allow them to kind of jump on board pretty quickly and just just during this segment i pulled out my phone to, to just like kind of demonstrate how quick it is buying from circle and i just i just did it within 30 seconds like all i had to do was open up my circle app or not they don't have an app yet but i w opened up the web app in right. google chrome and just signed in typed in 10 10 usd and uh you know i already have my bank account linked it's verified and stuff and hit deposit boom um i was i don't know if my uh, webcam can can see it but there's a verification message you just deposited ten dollars from your bank um into your circle account and boom it's it's there i can i can hit send and uh, enter a bitcoin address for my separate wallet application on my phone and um and send it there and it's and it's instant so that's i mean that's pretty cool like i've been i've been in bitcoin for like I've been aware of it since 2011 and I've actually only held Bitcoin for almost almost two years um, been holding it and like back then it's hard to get a hold of like before Coinbase there was basically only local Bitcoins and a few random exchange well I mean then we go back to Ma the Mount Gox days which was madness uh, like super super inconvenient and super hassle now it's just easier than ever so pretty pretty good inv advancement um and now it's easier than ever to buy bitcoin